Going therefore, teach ye all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dear faithful, this wonderful feast that we can easily uh, pass by, we almost sort of sneaks up on us and then disappears. It is really the, the first Sunday of after Pentecost, but Holy Mother Church decided that this feast day sort of should launch the rest of this liturgical year. We start with the Most Holy Trinity, a day to adore and thank God, the one God and three persons. In fact, every Sunday really is a Holy Trinity Sunday. Every Sunday is dedicated to God and the three persons of God. It is often called, Sunday was always called the Dies Dominica. It was the, the Lord's Day, the Day of the Lord, the, the, the Lord God and his three persons. It is this, this great mystery of our holy faith. You might say the, one of the essential, highest level mysteries, that there is one God, and in this one God, there are three persons that we, we owe everything to the triune God, the three persons in one God, our creation, our redemption, our sanctification, everything that is good that we have all goes back to the Most Holy Trinity. So it is certainly our duty today to remind ourselves of this this necessary adoration of, of the one true God. And one of the ways we do that, and that we can look at today, is the sign of the cross. So you, you see it sort of given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. Go, he says, to all nations, teach them, baptize them, sanctify all souls, convert all souls, and do it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay, so our Lord gives us this beautiful, we would say prayer, this beautiful gesture, this wonderful phrase of the Most Holy Trinity, which we call now the sign of the cross. So let's look a little bit today of what does it mean and how important it is that we use it and use it well. Something that every child, sometimes it's the first thing a, a young a very young child learns that parent takes their hand and begins to form the sign of the cross with them. Or even more, good parents will often give their child a blessing with the sign of the cross. Parents have that authority, authority given to them by God to sign the cross upon their own children. It's not the same level as a priestly blessing, but it is nonetheless a parental blessing. You see that in sacred scripture, even in the Old Testament. So we have this, this Sunday of the Holy Trinity where we can look at the sign of the cross. And when we say sign of the cross, we don't mean one specific style. There are several variations throughout uh, our history of the sign of the cross. There's, let's say, the, the most ancient one, which is called the, the small sign of the cross. You take your, your thumb and you, you make a small sign of the cross on your forehead, or sometimes forehead, mouth, and, and, and heart. This, this small individual little, little crosses you trace either on the forehead or the forehead, the, the lips and, and, and the breast. This small sign of the cross. It is this reminder that God the Father is the first person in the Blessed Trinity. He's the first to be named. And the, the forehead or our head is the first and principal part of our body. The first the Father, and then the, the lips where we speak, the Son, in the name of the Father, and the Son, the Son who is the Word of God. He is the eternal Word of God, the first begotten of God. And just as your words start from your intellect, so our Lord Jesus Christ proceeds as the Word of God, the Word of God the Father, the rational Word. And then the Holy, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, we say, 
is the spirit of charity, of love, where we say our, our heart, our heart's not our source of love, but we, we symbolize it as the, the source of charity, the seat of our love. The Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father and the Son, their love, for, their, their infinite love, the love of the Father for the Son, the love of the Son for the Father uh, brings about, spirates, brings about the love which is the Holy, the Holy Ghost. There's a great mystery here between the, the, the relations we would say that they are all equal in every way, these three persons, and yet they are one God. And that's why we say name, in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost. We don't say in the names, which would be more grammatically correct, in the names of these three persons, but we don't. To emphasize the, the unity of God, the oneness of God, the one essence of God, the divine nature and these three persons in the name of these, this one God who has three persons. This is why we say singular name in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And not only this, this truth of the Trinity, but this, you, this relation of the Trinity to the crucifix. You make a small cross with, with your finger. It is this idea that this truth that not only is the mystery of the Trinity, but the mystery of our redemption is from the cross. The most important event in human history is the crucifixion. And the Holy Trinity is involved in that, is, is the, the, the maker of that, the planner of that, the, the one who underwent it, the, a member of the Holy Trinity. That God, so, God the Father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son on the cross. That our Lord Jesus Christ so loved our souls that he, he himself suffered on the cross and died on the cross. That the Holy Ghost, again, takes the, the fruits and applies the merits of this cross to our souls, the, the sanctifier, the, re, the, the purifier of our hearts through the cross, that the Holy, the Holy Trinity chooses to work through this great event of the cross. That's why you make a cross and use the, the names of the three persons of the Blessed Trinity. Or sometimes we say the cross is what you start your, your day with or your actions. You ask God that he, God be guiding your thoughts, God be guiding your words, that the Most Holy Trinity be guiding your goodwill, your intentions of your heart, your desires, that your thoughts, words, and actions all be regulated by the law of God, the law of the Holy Trinity. This is the, the use of the small, what we call the small sign of the cross, but again, this is not the only one. The one that you see more often is the, uh, the large, what we call the large or Latin cross. That is to say, forehead, uh, chest, and then the two shoulders. This also is something from the very early centuries and especially used in the liturgy and the, the Holy Mass and all the sacraments, this larger sign of the cross. You see both, in fact, in, in the Holy Mass today, just before this sermon, the priest at the, before the gospel and people together usually make the small sign of the cross. But throughout the Mass, there are many, many other large signs of the cross, either on the, on the priest's person or over, over the, the book or over the altar, etc. The larger, what we call the Latin cross. As I say, the forehead, uh, the chest. In this case, again, there's a slight difference in that we say, again, the first person, the Father. Then we go to the Son, just like we have this month of the Sacred Heart, the Son, symbolized by the love, not only the love of, of, of the Holy Trinity, but the love of mankind, that He so loved us that He, he suffers and dies on the cross for us. This infinite love of, of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And then, of course, the Holy Ghost, the sanctifier, the purifier, the one who brings us all graces, the one who helps us carry our cross on our shoulders. 
And sometimes the, the, the shoulders are also symbolizing going from the left to the right, going from the, the state of sin and perdition and darkness on the left-hand side of God, going to the right-hand side, going to the side of the saints, going to the side of sanctity, going to the side of grace, going from sin to grace. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, carries us through his power, through his intercession, through his help, from sin back to grace. There are, there are many other beautiful reminders of our holy faith in this larger sign of the cross that we use. And then in both cases, we finish the sign of the cross with the word amen. This word that we many times people don't know what it means. It, it can mean several things. You see our Lord using it in the gospel when he wants to emphasize something. Amen, amen, I say to you when he wants to really strong, be strong and very clear and show the power and the importance of what he is saying. We can use it in that way, saying, yes, this thing that I said is very true and very important to me. This word means, so be it. I believe these things. I follow these things. I want everything our Lord has told me. Everything I just said in this prayer is very important to me. I want to continue in this, this life of grace. Amen can mean many things, but it usually means a strong confirmation, an affirmation of what I just said is important, it is true, and I do believe it. I'm not just saying the words, it is something true and something important. It's a good reminder to us that one word can mean something so important. So we, we sort of know and when you're a child, you learn this sign of the cross. But how do we use it? And why do we use it? Why is it so good to use it and use it well? First of all, as I mentioned, it's, it's very ancient. You can find it in, in the writings of the very early church fathers from the very early centuries. You see Tertullian re, uh, making remarks about it in the 170s, like very early on. Tertullian writes... In the, in the early second century, every step and every movement, the, the Christians, we, whether we're going in our house or going out of our house, whether we're getting dressed, whether we're preparing to go on a trip, whether we're sitting down at table to eat, whatever we may be doing, we make the sign of the cross upon our forehead. He's referring to the very earliest of the centuries. St. Ambrose refers to it as well in the, in the 300s. He says, we make the sign of the cross on our forehead and our breast, on our forehead that we may always confess God, and upon our heart that we may always love God. So he's already talking about the very early centuries. St. John Chrysostom refers to it as well in the early centuries. In fact, St. Augustine says, we know that no pope has ever commanded it, no council of the church has ever pushed it, it has just been there from the beginning, and therefore we know it's from the apostles themselves. The apostles gave this beautiful practice of the sign of the cross from the very beginning. That's how ancient it is. But even more so, it is a, a sign, a wonderful devotion that protects us against the attacks of the devil. From the very early century again, St. Ignatius, not Ignatius of Loyola, the Ignatius who was the disciple of St. John, one of these first martyrs. He says, the sign of the cross is a token of victory against the prince of darkness. When the prince of darkness sees it, he is terrified. When he hears it, he is afraid. That's how powerful it is that it makes the devil run away. St. Cyril says a bit later, a dog is afraid of the stick with which he is struck. So also the devil is terrified when he sees the sign of the cross made because it reminds him of the wood of the cross by which he was conquered. The devil runs away like a scared dog because the wood of the cross has conquered him. So any use of the cross with devotion, with humility, with love, sends the devil or the, his, his demons running away. Use the sign of the cross to easily defeat Lucifer and his devils. Not only that, but also it is a great help to, to overcome 
to defeat the temptations that bother us, temptations of the world, the flesh, or the devil, when we are tempted in our mind, or tempted in our eyes, or in our actions, we are pushed towards some temptation by the, 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 the spirit of the world, our own weak flesh. We make the sign of the cross with devotion, with humility, with hope in God that this cross defeated sin and therefore even more so it can defeat the temptation to sin. So using the cross against temptations. And finally we would say the, the Holy Cross, the sign of the cross brings down the blessings from heaven. The cross is a source of grace. We know that. This is the, as I always say, the magnificent aspect of our holy Catholic faith is that we do not, we are not afraid of anything on this earth. We're not afraid to use anything on this earth. This is, again, only the, only the true faith can do this. Only the, only the Catholic faith looks at all of material creation and says, all these things are wonderful. Everything on this earth, food, drink, material things, down to the plants and the rocks and the soil, into the most beautiful flower, the most beautiful things, the planets, anything on this earth or in creation can be used for the salvation of my soul or for the salvation of other souls or for the good of our person, of our body and soul. It is all these false religions. You know, you talk to these people sometimes, these, maybe they're pagans or false religions, and some of the false religions, you know, even if they're Christians, they're like, oh, you can't have, oh, alcohol is very bad, or that's very bad, or that's very bad, or, or the pagans are like, oh, I stay away from that sort of thing. Oh, that, that specific animal is bad. And you're like, why? And the Catholic says, no, no, everything, food, drink, creation, everything that is on this earth is for our use. Even instruments of torture can be turned into something wonderful. This ignominious instrument of death, which is the cross. You think that, you know, rationally speaking, Catholics from the, from the moment our Lord was taken off the cross would use that as a sign of curse. This thing which killed our Messiah, our Savior. We never want to see it ever again. The Catholics say, no, no, actually... This is a source of blessings. Our Lord has redeemed it. He has used it so well. He has shed his precious blood upon this for out of love of us. We will glorify this cross. We will use it. And it will be a source of great blessing. It, will it has destroyed the, the kingdom of Satan. And now we are redeemed by it. Let us use it. And you see it all throughout Catholic art in Catholic buildings. Crosses are displayed everywhere. Crosses on weapons. Crosses on uh, tableware. Crosses everywhere. You even have people making crosses when they make a loaf of bread. There's crosses in that. Crosses everywhere. Because all are redeemed or possible of redemption through this holy cross. That's why Holy Mother Church uses the cross throughout the Mass throughout the giving of the sacraments. You know, when your sins are washed away from your soul, it is from the words of absolution as the priest makes the sign of the cross. It is the cross which brings us graces. So use it well. Use it frequently. Do not be, uh, as many can fall into this bad habit of sort of making a, a sort of wishy-washy, shooing away the mosquitoes, uh, sign of the cross. No, no. It's deliberate. It's a beautiful thing. Do it with dignity. Do it with love. Teach your children to do so as well. That they make it as an act of adoration to God, a reminder of the Most Holy Trinity from which all of our blessings come from, from which everything good on this earth is given to us. Never be ashamed of it. Very often, you're with some people and they want to have a dinner or a meal and you start, you start saying the sign, making the sign of the cross before you bless the food and everyone's looking around, oh my gosh, all these other uh, people in the, in the hawker center are looking at me. Oh, how, how terrible. St. Cyprian says, Let no one be ashamed to confess his crucified Savior 
but let him sign his forehead with a holy cross. In all our actions, the cross should be used. Whether we eat or drink, come in or go out of our house, go to rest or rise. Oftentimes you find good families or good homes or good apartments. They'll have a, a little, uh, we call a holy water stoop, a little uh, thing with holy water or a beautiful statue or a cross at the door of their home. And they touch it with devotion and then they make the sign of the cross. As they leave their home, they leave the peace and tranquility of their home, the cloister of their home, and they go out into the big bad world to face it head on to do their duty, to work for the sanctification of their soul or the sanctification of the souls of people out in the world. The sign of the cross is powerful. It is a source of blessings. Use it well. Use it with hope. Use it with a great uh, faith, I would say, that God, through the Holy Cross, brings every blessing we could ever need. My dear faithful, frequently use it, devoutly use it, use it with repentance, use it with confidence. We will definitely experience the great effects, the great fruits, the great graces that come to us. We will overcome all enemies, interior, exterior. And this beautiful sign of the cross will bring us triumph with Christ and eternal happiness forever in heaven with him. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.